When you first open the tool, you see a map of these underground biodiversity patterns. These patterns represent the richness of our muscular mycorrhizal fungi. Richness is a measure of biodiversity. It refers to the number of different species present in each area. The bright yellow locations are hotspots where we predict the biodiversity of our muscular mycorrhizal communities to be extraordinarily high. In the lower right corner, you can toggle between our muscular mycorrhizal fungi, or AM fungi, and ectomycorrhizal fungi, or ECM fungi. These are two major mycorrhizal types found across underground ecosystems. AM fungi are associated with approximately 80% of all plant species. Partnering with plants in grasslands, croplands, and some tropical forests, they never produce mushrooms. In contrast, ECM fungi tend to form associations with only woody plants, including species from birch, beech, oak, and pine families, and many of these fungal species do produce mushrooms. When you toggle between these two types of fungi, clear patterns emerge. You see that hot spots of ectomycorrhizal richness are more in the north, where there are huge swaths of boreal forests, home to pines and spruces. In contrast, high AM fungal diversity is spread across the world but even more so around the equator. To see just the hot spots of mycorrhizal richness, you can click this button on the menu to highlight the pixels of Earth in the top 95th percentile of predicted richness. We mapped richness, but we also mapped patterns of endemism. On the menu, you can click endemism and the richness patterns disappear. You can think of endemism as a measure of how unique a species is in a particular area. These are places where we expect to find very rare mycorrhizal fungi, found nowhere else on Earth. Here we used a different color scheme, but again, bright yellow represents predicted hotspots, in this case of unique mycorrhizal communities. Now, if we switch back to richness, we can start searching for richness patterns at specific locations. An exciting feature of this tool is the one square kilometer resolution, which allows you to discover patterns at the hyperlocal level. Search by location name, or click the location button to zoom into your nearby area. For example, you can search for Accra in Ghana, and then move the cursor below to choose the exact location you want to view. Then we zoom straight to Accra. Now imagine you want a prediction for a specific pixel of Earth. If you click on the area, you get a pop-up representing a one square kilometer pixel. The pop-up gives you an estimated number of mycorrhizal species per 100 square meters, again with a color scale where the yellow end indicates greater diversity. The pop-up also shows if the pixel is a hotspot, protected, or within a high uncertainty area. A major aim of SPUN is to advocate for the protection of underground ecosystems, so it is important to know which of these richness hotspots are protected by current conservation measures. In the menu, you can click the Protected Areas or View icon to add a layer that shows where protected areas are located. When zooming into these areas, the names of specific protected areas are displayed. Protected areas are displayed in a transparent layer. You can readily see that many of the yellow diversity hotspots fall outside the protected areas. It is also important to explore our confidence in these predictions. How consistent are the models at predicting these underground diversity values? We therefore also mapped uncertainty as its own data layer. In the menu, you can click the high uncertainty areas or view icon to add a layer that shows where uncertainty values and model extrapolation is very high. These areas are displayed in a transparent white layer. In this case, we see there is very high uncertainty in southern Sahara, especially in Mali and Niger. This means these desert ecosystems are very underexplored, and more data is required to improve the model predictions in these places. This is only the beginning. We will continue to collect data together with underground explorers and local scientists. These data will be used to update the maps so we can better advocate for the protection of critical mycorrhizal systems.